Hi guys and welcome to today's task. For today's task we are going to be putting our cement fiberboard siding on our house and I'm going to show you exactly how to install it. The type of siding that we are installing today is a Nietzsche Hop product. It is a cement fiber board. This is actually called the Savannah Smooth and this is a eight and a quarter inch clapboard that will stack on top of each other and I've got it set to go as a seven inch reveal. It comes in 10 foot lengths and then you can cut it to any dimension in between there. Tools we're gonna use on this project are first and foremost our gecko gauges. These are what help hold our siding to the house while we nail it up. Next we will use a siding nail gun to fasten it. These are two and three quarter inch rim shank nails that are galvanized because it's outside so they won't rust. This is the tool you need. And for cutting we can use two products. We are going to use our circular saw with a cement fiber board blade on it. Now those blades are very expensive but they do work really really well. You can also use a four inch grinder with a diamond blade on it but your cuts aren't exactly as straight. It's a little bit harder so I like using both depending on which location I'm cutting the fiber board at. We will for sure be needing gloves for safety, safety glasses, and because the particles that are in this board make it so weather resistant, they're particles that you don't want to be breathing in when you're cutting. So you need an N95 mask while cutting any of this fiberboard cement. There are a plethora of other tools that we're going to be using like a string line, a chalk line, um, your measuring tape, those kind of tools that are in your tool belt. Hopefully you're going to need them. Out of all the Nietzsche Hop products, I chose to go with the Savannah Smooth. It matches the clapboard that was on the house when the house was originally built. And I kind of want to take it back to a similar look. It also brings it a good modern look in today's craftsman style homes. They have multiple other types of products to use that are cement, fiberboard, um, based. All of which are found on their website which you guys can look at and I will link in the description down below. Like any good construction project, if you've paid attention to detail in the very beginning, the final product will look that much better. If you haven't, their final product will not look the way it's supposed to. First thing you're gonna wanna do is lay your flashing out. Your flashing will attach to the bottom of the boards as low as possible. Mine actually ends up a little bit off the cement, but that's okay. And then you need to bring your Tyvek sheeting down over top of it, you need to seal it and make sure it is a good clean finish so that water will run down this, if it gets behind your cement board, to the splashing and out. Then you need to put on your corner piece trims, which we have on the front end. Our corner board trims actually match the exact same as our window trims. Go figure that. Next, we need to start running chalk lines. We need to go a chalk line off of this flashing up to eight and a quarter. That will be the top of our first piece of board. And I have a very sophisticated tool right here. It's a gauge. It says gauge on it. This is a gauge to determine how far everything needs to be away. And if you notice, it sits about three eighths off of everything. So we strung a string line at eight and a half inches from our flashing up to this line. Then the next actually happens to be our reveal, which will be seven inches. Now here on today's task, I believe in using the most high-tech tools you possibly can find so that you can get the best results for your video. This is it. This is a piece of old trim that used to be on the corner, but it's the straightest and most durable piece of, uh, I don't know, straight piece that I can find on the work site right now. This is going to be what I call my story pole. And on this story pole, you can see I've made marks at seven inches, which is the reveal on our clapboard all the way up. This tells me where to start this line and where the next line will be, where the next line will be, where the next line will be, where the next line will be. And you're probably wondering, Joel, why does that matter? Once you set it, you set your gauges and go up, keep it square. What does it matter? This tells me one little secret. This tool right here tells me where my clapboard is going to come in contact with my window. So I can see if I'm going to have a full piece or a half piece or a little trim cut. I have just a little bit of a trim cut according to this and I'm okay with that. It also tells me what's going to be up top. I have a little piece of a trim cut up top, up there. I just wanted to make sure that I don't have any funky stuff going on. I want to make sure that things stay square. And this story pole helps me set gauges over here. And with these same lines, I can set the same gauges over here and make sure I'm straight across, across the whole thing. The last thing I want to do is have a board show so much of a reveal under this window and not the same amount of reveal under this window. And this helps me determine that. These are just beginning steps, but like I say, the work has to be done before you start putting this board up. You have to find a stud. 
Nichiha's recommendations for fastening this is it has to be attached to a stud everywhere. So I have to go ahead and find all my studs at the end of the board and all the way throughout the board. So I've gone ahead and marked all my studs here and then I'm gonna draw a line from top to bottom. This is the work that's tedious and takes a little bit of time, but if it's not done, it's gonna slow your project down. If it's done, you'll be surprised at how quickly your project can get done. If you look closely at our model, this first piece that I put down is perfectly flat, and the second piece starts the angled look that'll be all the way up the house. I don't want the first piece to be flat like that. I need to kind of match that from the beginning. So I have to put a backer behind it, which I have the same shims we used on our trim and our corner boards. We're gonna fur the bottom layer of this board out as well. Okay, with all of our base level set, prepped, and ready to go, we are finally ready to start putting up our Savannah Smooth clapboard on the first round. The first round is gonna go on this first string line that we've set, and let's go. That was a dumb mistake. There's one last step before we put this first piece up, but this next step teaches us how to put up all of the rest of this. Everything has to end and start on a stud line, so it needs to be nailed in at this green line or end on this green line, and a nail has to be there. Our boards actually don't line up on studs because of the offset of our corners. So I have to cut the first level to length, and then hopefully from there on out, they should end up landing on studs. But you're gonna have to continually cut everything so it lands on a stud so it's secure. Our boards come in 10 foot lengths, which puts them at 112 inches. So I know 112 from the corner to wherever the stud is, is what I need to measure. A second set of hands makes this project a lot easier, but it is doable on your own. So according to this, I have a stud at 110, and we're gonna go to that. With our board now cut to length, we can start nailing it in. This first piece is gonna get a nail here and so is the piece that butts up against this. It's gonna get a nail here, but I really wanna make sure water stays out from behind there. So I'm gonna put a piece of flashing behind every joint. And it doesn't have to come all the way to the bottom, just down a little bit and a little bit above. And remember with this, if you've got any nails that aren't quite sinking in, go back and tap them in. So my measurement on this shows 75 and three quarter, but I don't wanna be exact. I need gaps for these boards to expand and contract but just a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to 75 and 3 8 I don't know if I'd call this a pro tip, but this is my pro tip. Cut a jog in your board that you're cutting on so that your blade can only go through the cement fiber board and not through this. And you will need that because both sides of this board need to be supported when we cut that. And if I let one drop or if it starts getting too tippy because of how little has been cut, it will break off and I don't want that. So you support both sides, cut a groove, and then your blade only touches the cement fiber board. Pro tip number two, when I started cutting this stuff initially, I had my blade set all the way down and I got a really bad burr on the cut. So I brought the blade down to the thickness of the board, which is a half inch, and it makes such a better cut. So bring the blade to only cutting just a little bit past what the thickness of the board is. I want to show is that the board does not connect completely to this piece. There's a small about eighth inch gap here and all the way down and on this seam there's a small eighth inch gap and I try to maintain that gap all the way up the building. Okay I've grabbed our mock-up that I built to kind of demonstrate this next point that's on the house. We have got our first layer of boards up, our second layer of boards up, and both of these sets we had to run on a string line to get them level. The next sets are gonna go a lot easier and a lot faster because of one simple little tool called a gecko gauge. This tool is built to slide underneath this panel 
grip it firmly, and then you slide the next sheet right down top. And it holds it in place for you against that wall. Pretty cool, pretty easy, and it's a lot simpler. Gecko makes multiple different gauges. Some are meant for half inch, and these ones technically aren't. These are only meant for seven inch thick, but I went and put a couple of washers back behind here to make them a full half inch depth because they work so much better. The other gauges that they have require two individuals to be on site working, and then you also get variances with them. With these, I set them every single time. I square it up and tighten it in place, set the new piece in, and I know it's exactly where I want it. And sometimes you're gonna have to fudge some of these down a little bit, so you can simply bring it off just a little bit, tighten it, and then set it in place even more if you need to fudge an eighth of an inch for like a window or something like that. These work really, really well, and these are the part we're gonna use the rest of the way up the house. One last side note before we go up this any further is you need to stagger all of your seams. There's a seam right there, and there's a seam right there. None of your seams need to be by each other, and I like to at least put them two nail holes away. So there's one, two, and it's on the third one. We are there. This really stinks wearing a mask everywhere you have to go but it really stinks when you're on your own work site by yourself but you still have to wear a mask but it is for safety and i agree with the reason we've got to wear these but it's hot all of our clapboard is all the way up up to the bottom of our windows and you may not be able to tell but the gap between this board and this board is bigger than this board and this board maybe it's visible on there i don't really see it the naked eye doesn't pick it up that well the reason is, is because our two windows are not perfectly level across they're pretty close but not quite so you just have to kind of feel it out and adjust stuff as it comes and goes but you want to be mapping it out beforehand with your story pole and know beforehand what you're going to be encountering i knew i was going to have a little bit of a difference and so i kind of prepped for it and just shimmied everything jimmied it a little bit so that it matched up perfectly now we have straight lines underneath the bottom of our windows and we're going to be working up these three areas that's going to be the fastest part i know those areas are pretty square within maybe an eighth of an inch which is plenty of gap for this stuff so i can cut a lot of it at once and then just lay it all in really really fast each section You guys, that is how you put up cement board siding, and that is just the system we take all the way up. As you can tell, I was able to cover a lot of ground quickly after I got the base level set. So the hardest part is setting the base levels, getting everything, uh, the pre-work done. But once that's done, it goes really, really simple. I will leave a link in the description for the Nichiha product that I used. Go check out their website. I will also leave a link in the description for these gecko gauges and any of the other tools that I used in this video. If you guys like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. A few notes, er, I wanna thank Nichiha. I wanna thank Nichiha for, I wanna thank Nichiha for partnering. Yeah. A fuel tool, two and a quarter inch. Two and a half, two and a half. Three and a quarter, I can go to three and a quarter inch. Two and a quarter. Oh, you said I can open that. No. I bet you wanna go biking. Biking on a weekday. How do people do that? Biking on a weekday. Let's get. I'll start out by showing you all. Let's see. And this is what it, our boards come in 10 foot lengths, which is 120. Let's see. Dang crane again. Seriously, what time of day is it? I've used multiple different gauges. Or sorry. Freaking. Oh, 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 crap off. Before the winds get too heavy. Dang.